Good morning and welcome to day 18 of the Red Letter Challenge here at Ascension Lutheran Church in Citrus Heights. I'm Pastor Scott. It's Sunday morning and I hope that you are planning on joining us for worship today, whether it's in person or online. We'd love to have you gather with us to, to worship Christ together. I am again holding this, it's actually paperweight, of the San Francisco Giants baseball and I'm standing by a, a picture of the stadium and a picture of my family, as well as uh, my Buster Posey bobblehead. And I'm a little disappointed Buster has decided to retire this year, um, but uh, we will make a do as Giants fans. Our red letters today are come from Matthew chapter five, and they are to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, Dodgers fans aren't necessarily my enemy, but sometimes it can be difficult for me to see them enjoy a victory, especially if it comes at the hands of a Giants loss. It can be difficult to wish the best for those who think so differently and root so differently than I do. Pastor Zach told a story in today's reading about a seminary professor he felt like had it out for him. And when Jesus encourages us to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute you, I think part of that act or, or part of what he's encouraging us to do is to think differently about them. If we pray for those who are our enemies and, <clears throat> and or love them and pray for those who persecute us, in those acts we must, we have to begin to have our hearts changed as it relates to them, to think of them differently. There's a, an axiom, a saying that says, you know, um, keep your friends close, but your enemies even closer. And I think by doing that, it's not biblical, I'm not quoting scripture there, but, but I think by doing that, as we become in relationship with those who we have conflict with, we can begin to imagine get to know them better and begin to see them not just as adversaries, but as more complete people, even Dodgers fans. If we, if we can get to know them and see that maybe that's just one character flaw, but the rest of them actually is quite good. I'm just kidding. But, but I think in that act, by, by loving them and praying for them, we can begin to see the best in them. Our hearts get softened. And as we interact with them in more loving and generous and kind ways, I would imagine that their hearts would soften too. My caution here, friends, is that in drawing those closer to us who are persecuting us, we never want to do that if it puts ourselves in personal and harm's way, if it's not good for us physically. We don't want to stay in a relationship that's abusive and, and would, would tear us down. But even in those situations, we can pray for those who are persecuting us, who are abusing us, who are inflicting war upon us. And pray that uh, trusting the power of the Holy Spirit to work in a way that is beyond our imagination, that might actually bring some peace, some love, some reconciliation in a way that we could never imagine it before. And we turn that over to God. We turn that hate, that anger over to God. And we begin to think of, of those who, who have been our enemies and those who have persecuted us in a more favorable way. The challenges are really difficult this week with, with forgiving other people. But if we can take a, a little step toward that end, um, it would be good, I think, for each of our hearts and it would begin to make a change in the world around us. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the Red Letter Challenge.